to the grid for the FIA GT World Cup. Welcome to the grid for the Macau GT Cup. And this promises to be a fantastic race. Make no doubt about it. Because what we're going to have here uh, is an absolutely fantastic grid. It is dripping with manufacturer drivers. And of course, GT3 cars are absolutely fantastic around any circuit, but particularly around the Macau Gear circuit. You've got drivers representing Porsche. You've got drivers representing Ferrari, BMW, Mercedes AMG. There's bound to be a brand I've missed. But in a moment, once the cars have arrived on the grid, uh, we'll go walk about and try and have a word with one or two of the stars of this FIA GT World Cup, the Macau GT Cup. Uh, and uh, bearing in mind that yesterday's qualifying race is what has set up the grid for today. It was Raffaele Marcello who yesterday won that qualifying race. He will start on pole position. He's going to be over that shoulder. But on the other side of the grid, there will be Mauro Engel. Now, they're both Mercedes AMG stable mates. They're driving for different teams but in the same type of car and 12 months ago it was those two that went toe-to-toe -to -toe on the first lap of the Macau GT Cup it was a fantastic battle all the way down to Lisboa and we're really looking forward to the rematch Mauro Engel wants to win again Raffaele Marcello is about to end his association with Mercedes AMG so he wants to go out on a high I asked somebody in the pit lane a few minutes ago who would you put your money on for the win and they said P3 Let's see whether that pans out. Let's go for a walk and see who we can find on that grid because drivers are getting out of cars and Raffaele Marcello in this very distinctive bright yellow Mercedes is the man on pole position. So let me elbow my way through and let's see whether we can have a word with the man that won yesterday's race in such fine style. The car with this Grazie Lello message on the side because after seven fantastic years with Mercedes AMG, this is where it ends, and is it going to end on the top step of the podium? Well, there's a very good chance it will. Raffaele, yesterday went really well. Here we are again on pole position. Feeling confident? Yeah, I mean, uh, as I said yesterday, it's quite important the start. So for sure, if I can keep the lead after uh, the start, then I mean, it's only to keep it clean and uh, to have good safety car start. I mean, the, the, the big danger here is there, yeah. Just reflect on that time at Mercedes. You've won so much. What are the highlights? Well, I guess uh, Macau in 19, uh, Spa last year. Then, I mean, we had many championships. I mean, I had many, many highlights, not many lows, luckily. So, I mean, um, I'm proud of what we achieved. And, yeah, I hope to, to finish in the eye today. What are you going to miss about uh, Mercedes AMG when you move on? Well, I mean, it, it's difficult to say because, I mean, at the end, I'm going somewhere where it's nice, and I think I can win uh, many races also there. So, I mean, I don't think we'll miss something because, I mean, it's, uh, it will be a memory, so it's, it's wrong to say we'll miss. It's just like it will be strange to be in a different colors, but it's, uh, it's a part of my life that is gone, so now we'll see. Rafael, good luck in this single driver race. Like, let's go this way, round the back. Uh, let me take my camera crew with me because I need to go and have a word with Mauro Engel. Now, he is no stranger to winning at Macau. Uh, the car is here, but I've lost him. Where's he gone? Matt, what have you done with him? Where is he? Uh, he's, he's wandered off to the shade, I think. He's gone to the shade. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, this way. Let's yeah. do an about turn. Yeah. He's over there by the, by the barriers. Right. Sorry, chaps. Uh, let's go and find him because uh, Murro is an absolute gun around here. And uh, we're about to see when we go racing just how competitive this is. Uh, Right, water taken on board, quick shower. Uh, Mauro, last year it was you and Lalo side by side all the way down to Lisboa. This is the rematch. The world awaits. Have you taken your brave pills this morning? <laughs> yeah, obviously it's always exciting here, uh, the start in Macau. So um, let's see. I mean, uh, we can try and get the best start we can and then uh, see, see what opportunities arise. Same car, different teams. Has anybody said, you know, be sensible, guys, or is this absolutely a fair fight? No, it's absolutely a fair fight. I mean, uh, I think, uh, you know, everyone on this grid wants to win this race. And um, obviously, you know, we know each other. We just respect each other a lot. And uh, we've always had clean and hard racing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think we're, you know, we're set to go. Just break down the circuit for me. We talk about all these opportunities on this part of the circuit where it's wide and it's fast. But going through the mountain part of the circuit, what can you do? Is it just, you know, is that ever an opportunity to overtake? You just have to stack people up. Uh, we'll see what we can do, but I need to head now. Good luck. Well done. Mario Engel there has to run to the car because that was the 10-minute board. Uh, let's go this way, shall we? Uh, and see who else we can grab possibly before 
Uh, we go racing. I'd like to see if I can go to BMW because we didn't get to Augusto Farfus yesterday. He is staying in the car at the moment, the Rover Racing BMW. But uh, we might be able to grab a very quick word with the Rover Racing driver. Let's see. Can we have a quick word with Augusto? Is he a bit busy? He's in the car, in the zone. Can we have a word? Let's try it. Augusto's won here before. Augusto, yesterday went pretty well. Good speed in that first sector. What are your chances? Well, let's see. Mercedes are pretty fast, so we need to, to try to take advantage of the first sector we have because they're very strong to the town. But yes, we had a good race, so we are ready for the challenge, up for the fight. Let's, uh, let's hope for a good and clean race. Excellent. We wish you well. Augusto Farfus then, who's been a touring car racer here in seasons past, as well as a GT World Cup winner. Uh, now, I want to still think BMW because Sheldon van der Linde is one of the rookies to Macau and he went really well yesterday. His car is here on the grid, except I've lost him now. Uh, driver's possibly sheltering in the shade. No, he's vanished. So let's um, see who else we can find instead. Daniel Serra's Ferrari might be the next port of call. Daniel, new to the circuit, but looked really impressive uh, yesterday. So let's see whether I can invade just very quickly. Excuse me, excuse me. Daniel, uh, for somebody new to Macau, yesterday was really impressive. Well done. How are you enjoying it? Uh, so uh, Macau is a unique track. It's been a very nice experience. Uh, I think P6 is a good position uh, for a rookie. So let's see yeah. what we can do today. And how is the car around here? Is it well suited to the circuit or is it needing a bit more pace somewhere? The, the car is quite okay because it's my first time, but it's the first time for the 296 here, so we are learning a lot. We did a lot of simulation in Maranello to, to get here as prepared as we can. But of course, when we are at the track, there is always something that we have to adjust, and uh, let's see if we can improve the car from yesterday. Daniel, good luck. Excellent. Thank you very much. Right, let's see uh, who else we might just quickly be able to grab. The countdown is continuing with pace. Audi, Christopher Hauser, let's hobble this way because uh, Christopher has been a loyal servant of the Audi brand and uh, very shortly with the five minute board looming uh, we might run out of time so let me quickly see if I can speak to Christopher. Christopher can I interrupt you? Um, looking forward to this? Excuse me I didn't hear you. Sorry are you looking forward to this? It's going to be a, a big battle. Oh yeah yeah definitely. Uh, um, yeah it's the main race so I think pretty sure that the first two laps going to be hard um, but that's what we're here for. We aim for and let's see how we end up. How was the car yesterday? They, the, the Mercedes looked so strong in that first sector of the lap. Well, definitely, honestly, the car feels pretty good, I have to say. Uh, yes, we struggle a little bit more maybe than the others in the beginning or after a, after a safety car. But, I mean, that's the thing. At the end, I think we have a strong pace. So, yeah, keep your fingers crossed. We'll look forward to watching. Good luck. Christopher Hauser then for uh, Audi. Now, I did a moment ago. I want to go this way, chaps, just quickly, if we can, because down towards the front of the grid which is where we also ought to be very shortly for the build-up to the race um, although this is the FIA GT World Cup the Macau GT Cup the entry is put together by SRO Motorsports group and it's got a very long stride but that is why hobble 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 Stefan sorry to interrupt you you can't leave a GT grid without a word uh, SRO's uh, founder and CEO Stefan Rattel uh, what a grid this is we love to be back. You know, we've been missing Macau for three years and, uh, and we're very pleased to be back with a grid which is stronger and better than it's been before COVID. And um, well, as always, going to be an amazing race. Single driver GT races are something we don't get to see very often. But this is just an amazing entry, isn't it? Not just the brands, but the drivers. Yeah, they are just all the best in the world are there, you know. and. Uh, to have Lelo and Paul having won uh, the race yesterday, it just reflects on the amazing season he had internationally, having won the Fanatec GT World Challenge, uh, uh, both overall and, and endurance in Europe. He's had a fantastic season, he continues, and we wish him and all the other drivers here a very good race. And long live GT3, it's been a great concept. Stefan, enjoy the race, thank you very much. Stefan Rattel of SRO Motorsports Group then that has put together this grid, and this grid, busy as it is, is about to get a little quieter with people being dispatched, and that means as the five minute board is sounded, I better get to the box, but this is gonna be a stunning race. Can't wait. Welcome to the Macau GT Cup and the FIA GT World Cup here in Macau. 
that's the scene that welcomes them. We have 22 degrees, sunshine and blue skies, and the scene is set. Great to hear from David Down on the grid, chatting to the drivers. The scene is very much set after their qualification race with Raffaele Marcello taking pole position, taking the win yesterday. Cool, calm, collected. The, the final outing for Raffaele Marcello with Mercedes AMG and doing it in fine style yesterday. Can he convert that in to winning the FIA GT World Cup and winning the Macau GT Cup? Last year, those two drivers made it here to compete for the Macau GT Cup. And uh, boy, what a show they gave us. David alluded to it side by side with Raffaele Marciello and Mauro Engel. They start on the front row of the grid. It's a mouth-watering prospect of them repeating what they did at the start of the race last year. We heard from down on the grid, both Mauro Engel and Raffaele Marciello getting ready for the start of the race. Mauro puts his gloves on. He was the eventual winner of the Macau GT Cup last year. Gets himself ready for what will be the longest race of the weekend so far, 16 laps. Next row back, we've got Mr. Macau, Edo Motara, Eduardo Motara. He's been flying his trade in Formula E World Championship this year. And he will line up on the inside of the second row of the grid in the gold and red Audi. Alongside him, Augusto Farfus. He's been a winner here at Macau in the FIA GT World Cup and gives a wave to the camera. He's good to go. He mentioned to David down on the grid that the Mercedes have been quick this weekend. They certainly have been, and they need to find something for the BMW. He's got a teammate, Sheldon van der Linde, on the inside of row three on the grid. And he'll be lining up alongside Daniel Serra in the number 51 Harmony Racing entered Ferrari. It's the 296 for Daniel Serra. Next row back. Another winner of the Macau GT Cup. That's Lons Van Thur. And getting himself ready in the Porsche for the start of what will be a very dramatic race. It's just dramatic seeing these cars and drivers. Christopher Arza heard from him down on the grid with David and getting ready for the start of the race. Daniel Junkadea is on the fifth row of the grid. He's won here at Macau in single seaters in the Macau Grand Prix and is a front runner. Another one of the platinum drivers. We have a whole host of platinum drivers, including Earl Bamba in the 22 car on the fifth row of the grid alongside. Next row back, we've got the number 15 car, Alessio Picariello and he will line up alongside the number 27 car and that is the car of Kevin Estra. You might think this is a roll call of the world's top GT drivers and you'd be correct. We have the cream of the cream here at Macau. Next back we have Frankie Cheng, Cheng Kung Fu on the seventh row of the grid alongside the number 52 car of Chan Wei An the way that the seventh row of the grid lines up. Three more rows to go, and not really shining as we know he can and will. Number two, Jules Gounon on the inside of the eighth row of the grid. And he will be alongside the number 33 car, and that's the car of Ye Hong Lee. R&B Racing into that Porsche 911. Last few rows of the grid, we'll see number 70, Marchie Lee would have been lining up alongside Adelie Fong in the number 50 car, but sadly the Hello Kitty backed car, which has had huge attention, been doing a, a roaring trade in the merchandise outside the gear circuit here at Macau, but a big, big accident yesterday for Adelie Fong. Unfortunately, the chassis not able to take the start of this race and quite a moving message on social media this morning from Adley Fong saying how sorry he was for all of the fans not to be able to race today but sadly that car not taking the start so we get ready for the green flag green flag is waved off goes the Lamborghini Urus the safety car this weekend for the 70th Macau Grand Prix and the roar of noise echoes around the streets of Macau. Such a glorious 
variety of engines here for the Macau GT Cup. And the beautiful noise of those engines comes together in a symphony, a harmony of sounds echoing off the barriers, echoing off the walls, and now the important job of weaving the cars as fast as they can to get heat into the tyres. It's a warm day, it's a lovely day. Blue skies, sunshine, packed grandstands, and this is the final race that we will enjoy before we have to build up to the Blue Ribbons event. The Formula 3 Macau Grand Prix gets underway local time here at 3.30 this afternoon. Local time now, just coming up to six minutes past midday. Welcome along wherever you are in the world. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a feast of GT racing over the course of 16 laps around the gear circuit here at Macau. Under the control of the Lamborghini Urus, they thread their way through. That is Mr. Macau. You can't walk anywhere around the paddock, around the circuit here at Macau without being stopped for photographs and um, autographs. Just a word with Mr. Macau, Eduardo Mortara. Top work, David, down in the grid. Uh, you got through many of the stars. Platinum driver after platinum driver after platinum driver. This is the cream of the cream. The Macau GT Cup, the FIA GT World Cup, is a race every driver wants to win. It is a race every manufacturer wants to win. And this is going to be a stunning race. Make no bones about it. And with an entry dripping in star drivers, with uh, an entry with the best GT3 cars, drivers, teams in the world. I, I, I can't wait. Is it going to be absolutely stunning? And Raffaele Marcello wants to go out on a high. Mauro Engel wants to win this race. It could all fall into Edo Mortara's lap. We'll wait and see. But that run down towards Lisboa, we know the importance of it from last year. It takes on even more importance now that this is an FIA badge race. You were egging them on. Well done. <laughs> Are we going to get a repeat of what we had last year? Yes, please. Well, it you was know. unbelievable, wasn't it? It was. I mean, it was just a stunning fight. You and I were, were slightly gobsmacked by what we were watching. Take two. This is the rematch. Amaro Engel was perhaps a little bit more uh, antsy than I've ever seen him before. We know he's a laid-back guy, and he was, but at that 10-minute signal, he was off to the car. That was that was for sure. He wants to win this. He desperately wants to put one over Lelo, and uh, equally, Lelo wants to go out on a high. It's been an amazing association that he's had uh, with Mercedes AMG. But behind, uh, Edo Mortara for third, Augusto Farfus lining up four, Sheldon van der Linde and Daniel Serra, the two Macau rookies on the third row. They both had massively impressive weekends. Oh, they really have. But so many of the, the stories have evolved over the four days of the Macau Grand Prix for the Macau GT Cup over the course of this weekend. And now this is the big one. The Macau GT Cup lines up behind the Lamborghini. Interesting, the only Lamborghini in this build. Normally we would say I have a Lamborghini or two. We've only got one for the safety car this year, but we are not short of world-class sports car manufacturers all about to take the start of this race. Here we go, David. The scene is set. Marcello in the yellow Mercedes AMG. The multicolored one alongside is Mauro Engel. It's an all Mercedes AMG front row of the grid. It is 16 laps. It's the FIA GT World Cup for the Macau GT Cup. And it is go. And a really good start by Marcello, who was slightly in advance of Engel as they came across the line. Mortara's on the inside of Barfus, the third Audi against BMW. They are toe to toe. Mortara goes ahead. Van der Linde comes up alongside. Engel is in the draft then. He's in the wheel tracks. He's in the toe. He goes to the outside line towards Mandarin, gets a face full of Marcello, he's not going to do it there, Voltara third, Van der Linde is up to fourth, Daniel Serra fifth, Barbers has gone backwards, sixth ahead of Van Thor, and Marcello is getting away by a couple of lengths as they come down towards Lisboa, mission accomplished at least on that one because Marcello learns, leads rather at turn three, Marcello from Engel is the one two. Through Lisboa they go and uh, Mauro Engel is having to look in the mirrors because Mr Macau, Edo Motora right there in the Audi, they climb up San Francisco Hill now and all of this is allowing Raffaele Marcello early in the race to pull clear. So it's not a battle between the two Mercedes side by side on the run down towards Lisboa, but would you believe it? Eduardo Motora right there at Macau. That start of Raffaele Marcello's was either very, very good or just ever so slightly anticipatory. But uh, he was certainly ahead of Engel. 
when he needed to be, and that was on the run for the first corner. There was no chance this year of Engel going alongside. He had to quickly change plan and get into the slip three, and he's catching back up again. Look as they come then uh, now down towards uh, police. So as they approach that sharp uh, right in a moment or two, this is where Marcello is certainly being caught, but Engel has got to stay on his tail all the way out of our band and plan that move towards this bar at the start of the next lap. These cars are just so wonderful, aren't they, around the tight and twisty section because you can scarcely believe they can get through this section, let alone the speeds that they're going and so close proximity to the other, the other drivers in the field. It is unbelievable. They thread their way around uh, a corner that you really wouldn't think these cars would fit around. They do so. Single file, the GT Cup field heads down now. The circuit opens up down through Black Sands towards Fisherman's Bend they go, Raffaello and Marciello, Mauro Engel has closed. He has, but is he close enough to think about a move? He has got to be faster than Marcello in this final sector and then get right up behind him all the way down towards his bar. But Marcello will know what's coming and he knows that's the big corner that he's got to cover off. Portara third, Van der Linde fourth, best of the rookies as they come across the timing line. In fifth place, Daniel Serra, down to sixth is Farfus, seventh is Van Thor, eighth is Jacadea, ninth is Picriello, and tenth is Albamba. Gap between the race leaders was just under half a second. Look at Van der Linde crawling all over the back of Eduardo Portara. Van der Linde has never been here before, but you wouldn't think it, would you? Look at this, right up against the wall, coming out of Mandarin. Absolutely tied to the back of Eduardo Mortara, the expert here at Macau. If you can be an expert at Macau, so much success for Eduardo Mortara. And now the Macau rookie, Sheldon Bandolina, all over the back of the Audi. Heading up the hill, then you're looking back from that Audi. That is Sheldon Bandolina in the BMW behind. And then it's Daniel Serra in fifth spot as they make the climb then up San Francisco, heading towards Paternity and then down towards Teddy Yip. Eternity, so we get next, and the speed building at this part of the circuit where Mortara hangs on to that third place. They are arguably better through the corners, but not quite with as much grunt in a straight line. And drivers on the grid saying that they've got to do the hard work early on in this race. Well, Marcello has done it seemingly to perfection, but don't rule out Mortara, don't rule out Engel, don't rule out Engel, but all it takes is one tiny, tiny error, and that wall is there to receive you. But Engel now dropping back a touch. Looking back from Eduardo Mortara's car at the BMW, you realise just how close they come to the wall on this tight and twisty section of the circuit. The BMW barely a whisker between himself and the wall on the outside of the corners. As they now go around Donna Maria, it's Mercedes, Mercedes, Audi and BMW, the top four. And they head up towards the Melco hairpin. Raffaele Marcello turns through the corner. Could he be any more laid back if he tried? Uh, only when he's asleep, I think. Yes, he's just an extraordinary character. <laughs> but put him in a race car. Bang, does he deliver? So Engel chasing Marcello. Mercedes AMG one and two. Audi third. BMW fourth. Ferrari fifth in this battle of the brands. Where's the best Porsche? It's only seventh. Porsche having a not great time, it's going to be said. And Lawrence Van Thor is upholding honor in the very attractive, sort of plum colored 911, a little bit further back in the queue. Diving down through our bend, up towards the line. They come. And Raphael Marcello leads. He's done the fastest lap of the race. And he is getting away nine tenths now. He stretched that margin to. And uh, quite a few of them putting in personal a best and then overall best sectors. Edo Motara, best in sector three. You said that, didn't you? In that section of the circuit, the, the Audi really does uh, go very well indeed. Sheldon van der Linde in the final sector. That's the quick sector. You did say that, didn't you? Goes overall best in the final sector. That's Farfus having a look at Daniel Serra then. Ferrari ahead of BMW. The BMW has been really good in this part of the circuit. We saw that yesterday. But Farfus got mugged off the start, didn't he? So he's fallen back. Bearing in mind, he started fourth. He's trying to push forward, but Daniel Serra, I'm really impressed with the way that he and also Sheldon van der Linde have attacked Macau this weekend. They've just steadily learned and progressed, and both of them looking like they've been here for many a season. He wasn't worried about being a rookie around the gear circuit no. when you spoke to him, was he? He was relishing the prospect. It's very nice, he said. Yeah. One of the other rookies, I did catch up briefly with Jules Gounon, who uh, is yeah. not having such a happy time. He said, we just can't find a balance. He said, the car just feels unstable. We've gone upside down on setup, and he said, I, we just can't get to the bottom of it. So you're not seeing the best out of Jules Gounon. Trying to do the Mercedes AMG star, but it's being a bit hamstrung this weekend for whatever the reason is. The team doesn't know, so they don't know, we don't know. And Christo Farfus doing what a Christo Farfus does in this BMW with all the grunt on the circuit. 
puts in the overall best in the first sector down in sixth place. Edo Mutar once again puts in the overall best sector in sector three, the twisty section suiting Eduardo Mutara in the Audi. Again, putting in the overall best sector, but Raffaele Marciello has got the fastest lap of the race, leads the race, 2.17.052 on that last lap for the race leader. The advantage still under a second, so 0.9 of a second between himself and Mauro Engel in second. Down they come towards our band, speed building at this part of the circuit. You can see it feels faster just because it, it looks wider and it is wider but those barriers are still there almost arms outstretched saying come on come on take me on if you dare and as drivers have run wide certainly at our bend over the past few seasons and misjudging ever so slightly the consequences can be severe just to look how close pretty much everywhere they are to the wall trying to make the most of the limited width of the road the lead gap is still hovering at nine tenths of a second Marcello another fastest lap though we're in the 16s Mortara third Van der Linde fourth then it's Sarah ahead of Farfus this is Van Thor he's seventh at the moment and there are the leaders and again with Van der Linde closing off Mortara this is where he's got to try and open the tap on that BMW but he's not going to get close enough in time he's edging to the left and to the right to try to unsettle the Audi good luck with that <laughs> Fates a dummy to one side, jinx to the other. There is no way around uh, Eduardo Mortara. Hugely experienced, hugely successful here at Macau. And this is a treat. Looking back from the multiple winner here at Macau, Eduardo Mortara looking back to Sheldon van der Linde in the BMW. Now, this is where the BMW is exceptional, around the twists, around the turns, the ups and the downs of the hidden section here at Macau. And uh, the Audi is very well suited to this part of the track. Again, Agusto Farpas in the BMW, quickest, overall quickest in the first sector. And this time, Daniel Serra in fifth place goes overall best in sector two. So those absolute best sector times being peppered across the different drivers, across the different brands as well. Looking a little bit further back, getting the, uh, the tail view there of the cars going down towards police. This is coming out of Moorish to climb up the hill. You can see Marcello getting away. And if anything now, maybe, maybe, maybe we're heading for a battle for second place because Mortara is just edging clear of Van der Linde and might be able to have a go at Engel on the next open part of the circuit. In other words, from here all the way down to Lisboa the move might be on we know the Mercedes is good in a straight line but equally we know that Mortara is a real hero around here so you've got another clash of the Titans building up it's for second place your third at the moment with Eduardo Mortara that's Mauro Engel ahead it is and they turn into the corner down towards the final section of the circuit to complete now four laps and this is a 16 lap race what a prospect eh we've got top class drivers top class cars they all compete they all want to be here Mauro Engel and Raffaele Marchiello even when this uh, this race last year did not have the FIA GT World Cup banner um, across it it's back this year but they still came they wanted to be here when Engel went across the line, he lapped quicker than Marcello. Mortara lapped quicker than the two ahead. Quicker than anybody is Farfus. So it's Constantinering within that leading six, only by a tenth or so. But it's game on. They've not given up. Nobody, nobody, nobody is settling for position. Look in the background. Farfus on his toes to try to unsettle Daniel Serra down towards Lisboa. Oh, no, you don't. First time we've had that Ferrari 296 at Macau, and it's fifth in the hands of the Brazilian driver, Daniel Serra. And Augusto Farpas has won here. He's won in the yeah. FIA GT World Cup a few years ago, but Augusto Farpas is exceptional around the gear circuit here at Macau. Great to watch. Augusto Farpas right on the tail of the Ferrari of Daniel Serra up into the twisty section. They're going through the left-hander at Teddy Ip. They move on towards the Solitude S's where the cars go from right to left to right to left, the wall, the barrier. It's all to deal with and how close they go as they thread their way up through these big groups of cars that thoroughly entertain the crowd. The grandstands are packed there, waiting and ready for the Formula 3 Macau Grand Prix. And what better precursor could you have than the FIA GT World Cup and the Macau GT Cup? You talk about Farfus, you're absolutely dead right because he's another of the winners of the FIA GT World Cup and every previous winner is on the grid but he's also been a double gear race winner. So he's another driver with so much knowledge and experience of Macau that he can call on. Good battle lower down, Leo Yi there just ahead of David Chen. That's 13 for 14, uh, those Porsches. 
Uh, we've been talking all weekend about Kevin Estra having a pretty tough time. His is the purple Porsche there on the back of El Bamba coming down towards Melko. He's up into 11. But uh, a couple of times this weekend, we've had Kevin off into the barriers. The Porsches, though, I think have really lost out on the BOP. They've not been as fleet of foot as we expected. Uh, we were waiting for this battle between Raffaele Marcello and Mauro Engel. Mauro is still there. He's keeping the gap to yeah. under one second. It's point nine. It's a longer, longer race. It's the longest race we've had so far this week. Weekend. In fact, last weekend as well, a 16-lap race for the GT at World Cup, the Macau GT Cup. And we may yet have this battle between Mauro Engel. It's come down, it's come down by a 10. It's come down to 0.8 of a second between the top two. But let's talk about Raffaele Marcello, a wonderful association with Mercedes AMG over the years. He was cool about it, wasn't he? He's got a lovely little uh, uh, logo on the front of the car saying Grazie Lello, and uh, that's his nickname within the team. And uh, it would be a nice way to finish the association, wouldn't it, to take the FIA GT World Cup, just to add to all the other trophies that Raffaele has got over the years. It would indeed. He has been quite outstanding in these cars. Doesn't matter which championship, which teammate uh, he's been winning this year, whether it's been in British GT at Snetterton, whether it's been in the Fanatec uh, GT World Challenge Europe Sprint and Endurance, and here he is potentially going to win in uh, Macau as well. It's, yes, there is nothing really left to win for him in these cars now. Did uh, Raffaele Marcello say how nice it was to be on circuits like Alton Park in the UK? Wasn't it Raffaele who said that? Yeah, and Jules Gounon as well yeah. when they first came over. Old school circuits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, here's an old school circuit. Here's another one that leaves absolutely no margin for error. Uh, we had a quick shot on board with Lawrence Van Ford. He's definitely dropping away from that top six, isn't he? To the eye. The gap between the leaders, I was going to suggest, is coming down. But the sector times argue with that, actually, although Angle was good in sector one. Uh, Marcello has scratched that margin again. It seems going up the hill. Mortara coming back at the pair as best he can. But really, it's on that uh, element of the circuit from here, now down the Lisboa, where you can open up the power of the cars. Look, Mortara getting right onto the back of Angle, but then the power of the Mercedes AMG kicks in and he's almost got a wave of goodbye. It's wonderful to watch these cars coming down onto the far sweeps of the circuit, the end of the circuit, down through Fishman's down through then the completion of a lap and they will be completing six laps at the end of this because these are roads these are the roads of Macau therefore they are not billiard table smooth so you see the little bumps and these cars react immediately and they come oh so close to the barriers but inch perfect Raffaele Marcello completes six laps now the gap 0.9 of a second it is absolutely the same lap after lap metronomic aren't they and that is why these are factory paid professional GT drivers what might change is this third place because although Eduardo Mortara is ahead of Sheldon van der Linde it is not by much although on this lap van der Linde I think had just fallen away ever so slightly out of Mandarin and likewise Farfus isn't as close to Seller as he was earlier on so frustrating this for Mortara he's brilliant on the brakes he claws back a length or length and a half against Engel but then it's too late He's been in very different machinery this year, hasn't he? He's gone up the hill, climbing, threading our way through as we go through the twists and turns, the wall on the left, the barrier on the right-hand side. Such a demanding circuit, this, for GT drivers, and they have now completed six laps, and dare I say it, six incident-free laps. That is the calibre of driver we're dealing with. It is, although I think Mauro Engel would quite welcome a safety car, wouldn't he? Because that might give him an opportunity to have another go on a restart. Because at the moment, I don't think he's going to be able to make up that nine tenths, especially as Marcello is upping his pace in the sectors once again. And he's just edging away. It's only by under a tenth, but it all adds up. And here, look, Mortara, at this narrower part of the circuit where there's no chance of overtaking, is right there on the back of Engel. So here, you don't really have to do a great deal of defending because it's just unfeasible for a big wide car to get past you. A little bit different, maybe, in one or two of the other categories that race here over the uh, two weekends this year. And the Melko hairpin, as Alan's made the point already in the weekend, has this permanent yellow flag, which means don't even think about it. No, there isn't the space, is there? I don't know how they get these cars around me. It, it is quite incredible. But also, they don't lose time because no. the exit from the Melko hairpin sets them up for this quick run down through Black Sands, through Fisherman's Bend, up towards our Bend. The final turn on the circuit, 
and that sets them up in turn for the overtaking position on the circuit down at this bow rack. Heavy braking into the right-hander. Mortara off our band, right up against the wall. The lead gap is still hovering about the nine tenths of the second mark. And Daniel Sarah has just done the fastest lap of the race. So he might be a rookie and he's on his own. He's not getting a toe or anything, but he's just done the fastest lap of the race. The Ferrari in fifth place as they come towards us. We are on lap eight out of the 16 here in the Macau GT Cup, which doubles up as the FIA GT World Cup. And that's the leading six coming down towards Lisboa. And this time around, it is Engel quicker in sector one. And Augusto Farpas once again puts in the overall best sector in sector one. Augusto Farpas in that BMW, they're just suited. They go so well hand in hand over the course of the four days. Uh, and there is an incident down at Lisboa. They all begin to rub paintwork and a green flag being waved at San Francisco at the bottom of the hill. Well, that was Christopher Hazard getting ahead of Kevin Estra. And that, I'm afraid, in the wall looks like David Chen's Ferrari. And that's gone a long way into the tar stack, hasn't it? It's embedded in there by the look of it. David Chen was in 14th place. That was behind that little battle that we were looking at going to San Francisco. Uh, but that's going to take a little bit of retrieval, I fear. So this is what Mauro Engel has been hoping for. An interruption, maybe, that will give him a lifeline. Can that car be moved, or are we going to have to have a safety car is deployed? That's the answer. The yep. safety car deployed. The car is deeply buried into that tyre wall. Now, that tyre wall is two tyres deep and very, very well lassoed together. That was Kevin Astra dive bombing Earl Bamba. So they might be representing Porsche, but no love lost. And then there was contact that takes the rear diffuser wow. off Astra's car. And Christopher Hauser says, thank you very much. Through he goes, two places handed on a plate. It's Christmas. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Up San Francisco Hill with the job done. And then you see the car buried in the tyre barrier at the exits of this boa. Now that's uh, retrieval is going to require the car to be pulled out from the tyre barrier and then up. So it's not just a, a simple quick fix down at this boa. 19 cars in today's race. We lost the Hello Kitty and the Fong Audi after all the damage sustained yesterday, which ultimately stopped the race, didn't it? We had a race suspension uh, He's put yesterday. up a, a really nice post on social media today saying thank you to everyone for this huge support that they've had for the car. I apologise for not being able to race because they have had this amazing yeah. support this yeah. weekend. Although, to take the positives, Kitty's got eight lives left, <laughs> so that's all right. <laughs> but it was a big wreck. The car sits rather forlornly in its garage with the uh, sheet over the top of it. You're riding with Lawrence Van Floor at the moment, and he's in seventh place, but we're under safety car conditions in the Macau GT Cup, the FIA GT World Cup race here at Macau. Cool. Time for a breath. Well, eight laps we got, uh, just about, before we got the chance to pause and uh, collect our thoughts keep the tyres up to temperature for the drivers and everyone in single file while that car is recovered from Lisboa will take a little while because they'll have to extricate the car. It's maybe one of the problems with those aerodynamic fronts of the cars, they just dig into yeah, the yeah. tyre wall when they go off and that's going to be a pull back. Two cranes down there at Lisboa of um, pretty impressive standard and you can see already they've got it tethered up the cranes on the outside of the corner there you see the big one right on the inside of the corner and then after the corner as well we've got a, a very long boom on that uh, crane to get cars lifted out of the way very quickly it's interesting wasn't it that shot we had of the Astra Bamba contact and how uh, as El Bamba took his line and Kevin Astra took his it was almost like a, a tin opener it just wiped that diffuser off the back and it, you know, that's going to matter certainly on that section down to Lisboa so I think Kevin Astra might be pleased he gained one place but actually in the grand scheme of things he's lost bodywork and a bit of downforce and he didn't really progress it very far because as he was gaining one place Haza gained two and that put him uh, ahead of the pair of Porsches and it pushed Kevin Astra back to where he was anyway in the overall standings but right now Raffaele Marcello leads under safety car conditions. Mauro Engel second, Edo Mortara is in third position. So, under the control of the safety car and under the control of the crane for the 52 car of Chan Wei An. Oh, it's a mess, uh, isn't it? It's, yeah, not pretty, is it? It says ouch to me. It says, yeah, ouch in a big way. But the car in the air, that's good news. The marshals will sweep up some of the 
debris very quickly while the car is still being retrieved to the other side. It parks outside a shop, um, which is a, a fairly weird thing to see. The, car, the crane swings around it puts the car in safe place until the end of the race so it can be recovered but uh, there are shops on the other side of the barriers here at Macau because as normal as life can be at Macau it will continue true so you can nip off and get two apples um, a loaf of bread and a, and a front upright if you, can get, you if you got five apples you'd have the height of Hello Kitty well this is true this is true well, might be four and a half after yesterday <laughs> it was a lot of whack but you're right you will have noticed, everybody, that Alan has become an enormous fan of the Hello Kitty Audi, and he takes it personally that the car was damaged yesterday. The safety car is going to be in this time. Couldn't see the car last night. They were working on it. The carriage was pulled off, so we couldn't see the side of the car. But that was such a shame. Such a shame. The good news was that Adley Fong was OK, because yeah. it was a big, big hit. That's Eduardo Mortara. Eduardo Mortara is in third place at the moment. And he's trying to work out what he can do on the wing start. He's got the tyres all back up to temperature. Uh, Mauro Angle is about to have perhaps the most important restart of the season. And how does Raffaele Marcello control it? Look at that for being laid back. Just a tonically hand on the belt. OK, right, let's decide when to go. The guy's a star, he really is. <laughs> there are so many stars on this grid. Here we go then. We're about to get to racing back on the way as soon as the safety car pulls in the one and only safety car intervention so far. Let's get the heat back into the tyres. Edo Motara weaving the car around. And Raffaele Marciello has a huge gap at the front of the field on the restart. But what was Engel doing? Because he's certainly not within five lengths of the leader and he's got a problem. Motara's gone by and Mauro Engel's Mercedes has pretty much gone into limp homo by the look of it because they've all come flooding past him. He couldn't go after Marcello. There wasn't a plan. He's got a problem. It's compromised everybody behind him. It's given Marcello a monster lead. But Engel's got a problem. Van der Linder again tries to get past Motara to no avail so now because you couldn't overtake until you got to the line everybody stuck behind Engel has been affected Marcello is away Scott free but there's going to be a mammoth battle for second place now I was expecting the BMW to be right there down on this bow but he slots in behind Eduardo Motara they thread their way through within an inch of each other around this bow up the hill they go I expected the BMW you know, to be right on the tail of Motara down at this bow but he dropped back a little yeah, Mortara's got a lead right foot, hasn't he? He knows exactly how to ring everything out of the alley at that section of the circuit and where to position to defend. So right now, you've got Mortara up into second place. Massive disappointment for Mauro Engel. But yeah, having had that safety car in a way he needed, it was as though the car was either stuck in a gear or, like I say, in limp homo because it just never picked up pace, did it? Never did, no. Uh, very disappointing for Mauro Engel. What a shame. What could possibly have gone wrong during that safety car intervention that caused Mauro Engel drop right back? He was not within the regulatory uh, distance between himself and Raffaele Marciello. An incident uh, between 22, yep, El Bamba, and 27, yep, Kevin Estra, um, being investigated. OK. So Richard Norbury, the uh, chairman of the stewards, and his uh, two colleagues will have a quick look at that and see whether it was hard racing between uh, each of them trying to be the, the, the hero for Porsche or whether there's uh, anything that needs to be offered up as a penalty. Out of the Malco hair, if you're looking back from the new second place Audi of Eduardo Mortara, we're on lap 10 out of the 16 in this Macau GT Cup race with Augusto Farfus falling away just a little. Again, with Daniel Sarah in fifth place. Down they come. In fact, we've had the change. Yes, Marcus has jumped the Ferrari, forgive me. So uh, Marcus out of sight has gone by, and what that means now is that he's trying to go after Van der Linde. There is a gap to make up, but that uh, little bit of confusion as they have to dodge around the trouble angle has certainly given now Marcus a chance. Oh, the noise, the noise is glorious. They come past the commentary box, and it's so many different engine notes, so many different engine tones, and uh, they all say huge speed, huge grunt. Here we go, Van der Linde on the outside down at Mandarin, having a look at the multiple winner here at Macau at the back of Eduardo Mortara's car. What a battle as they go down towards them. Farfus is there as well. Farfus having a look at the teammate, the back of the BMW. This is wonderful, Audi, BMW, BMW. 
Same type of car, different teams operating them, but yeah, Barfos now desperately keen to get ahead of Van der Linde. He wants a podium out of this, doesn't he? Remember that he was fourth on the grid, but he fell back early on in the race, and this actually might be helping Mortara now, because Van der Linde ain't going to give up third, and while they squabble, uh, Mortara might be able to get away. Maro Engel into the pits, I'm afraid, so after all the anticipation, it's come to naught for Maro. Real, real shame. Look, Mortara is getting away, because right now Van der Linde is focused on that rear-view mirror, or the rear-view uh, television screen that they have in a modern-day GT car because absolutely filling it is Farfus. Yeah, Farfus right on the tail. Two BMWs tied together as they thread their way around the twisty left and right and left and right. The wall, the barrier, it's all there. Two BMWs together chasing down the Audi in front of Eduardo Mortara. And bear in mind that Eduardo Mortara on this part of the circuit, that car, that combination with driver works so, so well on this part of the track. But when they get out of the Melco hairpin, that's when the BMWs really do come into their own. Up towards the Melco hairpin, down towards the Melco hairpin, they go downhill, turn through the corner, and the two BMWs turn through Melco now. Now that Mortara has a clear road ahead of him, he is starting to chip away at Marcello in the sectors. So sectors three and four, the Audi has been quicker. Not demonstrably, but just by a little. And I'm not suggesting he's going to be able to catch a pass, don't misunderstand, but he is having a go. He's certainly charging. Now, it could also be that Raffaele Marcello is driving within himself because he would have seen nothing behind him. And he knows, therefore, that he's got a big gap to be able to preserve. And into the pit lane goes Van der Linde. Sheldon Van der Linde peels off into the pit lane. Well, it's surprise after surprise, isn't it? What happened to Mauro Engel? What happened to Sheldon van der Linde? And Augusto Farpas now in a podium position as they complete 11 laps out of 16. Right, I'm just looking to see whether van der Linde stops at the team. He does. So Sheldon van der Linde, it would be that he's right just out of my view, unfortunately. I was wondering whether it was a drive through that hadn't come up on the timing screen. It's not. He stops at the team. So maybe he's run over something and he's worried about a tyre because the pace would be good on that lap, and then suddenly, bang, into the pits he came. Well, Sheldon and Van der Linde in the BMW was able to be right on the tail of Eduardo Mortara. What now can Augusto Farfus do? There's a bit of a gap to make up. I reckon it was a puncture, or he needed a new tyre. Maybe he felt there was a tyre issue because they dispatched him very quickly. You saw the 11s on the road where he's gone storming out. So Sheldon Van der Linde is back in the race, so... Uh, it seemed to come late in the lap as though he either felt there was or had identified we're correctly thinking, there was a puncture. thinking they changed the rear. Right, so, okay. Yeah, one of the rear tyres on Sheldon's car. Well, if he did come late in the lap, he was fortunate because he didn't seem to lose a massive amount of time. You know, if it happened at Lisboa, for example, or earlier on in the lap, it would have been a big, big drama. Right, so Marcello to Mortara, 2.7 seconds, and last time around, actually, uh, there wasn't a lot to choose. It was uh, not even a tenth of a second, although Mortara was slightly quicker. That's Farfus third, Sarah fourth, Shukadea fifth, and Van Tor just picking into shot in sixth place. Of course, does that BMW come coming out of at the right-hander at Moorish, and then on to the final section of this tight and twisty section of the circuit through Melco Hairpin. And Christo Farfus always spectacular around the gear circuit here at Macau. Winner, as we've said, of the FIA GT World Cup a few years ago now. Played a very, very wonderful present to Charlie Lamb by winning the race. Charlie Lamb, of course, the head figure it's uh, much beloved by BMW over the years, and BMW makes a sport. And very sadly, after enjoying that moment on the top step of the podium with Augusto and his final race to Schnitzer, very soon after that, we lost Charlie Lamb. So, um, really rather fitting that Augusto, I'm sure that will be one of his highlights of his career, his very, very long and successful career. But being able to deliver the golden trophy. The FIA GT World Cup to Charlie Lamb. Well, that was something to remember. Now he's fighting for second place. Can't really do anything about the gap between himself and Eduardo Mutara. Yeah, the gap is not coming down, is it? Try as uh, Augusto might. Looking back here at Christopher Haza. So you're on board with Vantor now. Uh, what did Christopher say on the grid about pushing? Well, he certainly has because he dropped back early on. I think he was on page two of the timing screen, but he's up to seventh place overall. If anybody knows an Audi R8 inside out, it is Christopher Hauser. He must have done more miles in those cars, I think, than probably anybody else. And uh, uh, he remains an incredibly dependable GT driver. The number of times you say, 
Hazard makes a mistake or Hazard off the road, I can count on the fingers of one finger. You know, it just barely happens. Same applies to Raffaele Marciello, who has now completed 12 laps yeah. out of 16. He rarely makes a mistake. He went straight on at Belco Hairpin last year, and we said, he made a mistake. Surely not. No, <laughs> surely not. It was not the case. There was something wrong with the car last year. Kind of balances out, though. Last year, it was him that had the mechanical woe. This year, it's Mauro Engel. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kind of balances, but hey, Mario Engel will be back, and maybe Raffaele will in the fullness of time as well. But wearing different overalls, we'll see where his uh, manufacturing program well, takes that him. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Mate? Yeah. I think GT racing is going to look very different next year. We're hearing all sorts of stories, of course, of teams changing brands, of uh, brands disappearing, of drivers being on the market, some moving away from GT racing into uh, the uh, hypercar scene, some going from. Uh, Jones GT racing to the pseudo GT DTM category. So I think entry list will look different and maybe another wave of stars will take centre stage. And Ronald Motara has just put in the overall best in sector four in uh, second place. So Ronald Motara, at the end of the last lap, he was almost three seconds behind the race leader, Raffaele Marciello, who is metronomic during this race, not under the pressure of Mario Engel now. He's able to consolidate the advantage. 2.6 seconds now at the end of 13 laps. Only one interruption in this race so far. Yeah, Shoulder Van der Linde had, has rejoined, but he's last, which is a, a real shame, because that doesn't tell you how good he has been this weekend. If you look at the result sheet, you think, oh, he didn't do very well at the cap, did he? Well, he did. And, and Sheldon for WRT, Eve Weir, and Spanson Boss's team, and he's been another of the standouts for me. Kevin S. in the meantime, uh, I hold my hands up to being a Kevin S. fan, uh, is sort of getting on with it, finally he's up in the ninth place, but the Porsche drivers, I think collectively will tell you this has been a tough weekend. Yeah, when you look at Lawrence Van Tour down in sixth place, the car, by the way, looks absolutely yeah. stunning. They always think really hard about the liveries to, to run in the sunshine here at Macau, and uh, Lawrence Van Tour's Porsche looks just yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Many of the cars with a special livery for uh, this region, whereas this colour scheme that Raffaele Marcello carries for the Landgraf team is a familiar one. It's the colours he carried last year to win the German uh, ADAC GT Masters title. And as he drops down the hill once more, this is his race to lose. Doesn't matter what Eduardo Mortara does, Raffaele will have enough in hand, but the confidence is up. And this is just the perfect way for him to end that seven-year association uh, with Mercedes AMG. I would start to tell you all the things he's won, but I've got a flight at midnight, so I won't have time. <laughs> We've only got three more laps. Two and a half, really, because they are on lap 14 out of 16. Raffaele Marciello in splendid isolation coming out of Donna Maria and down towards the Melco hairpin. The gap between himself and Eduardo Mortara came down by three tenths on the previous lap. So Eduardo Mortara, 2.6 seconds behind the race leader at the end of lap number 13. What's the gap going to be at the end of lap 14? You know what? We have been very excited about this race in previous years uh, when we have side-by-side -side battles. We are excited anyway, even though we haven't had those side-by-side -side battles during this race. It is just exciting to see drivers of this calibre and this machinery driving around the gear circuit. There is no such thing as a dull race for the Macau GT Cup because just seeing these cars and these drivers is enough. You can close your eyes and it will be exciting because they sound great and as we've made the point, all of the cars have a different engine note. You can tell the Mercedes from the Porsche, you can tell the Audi from the Ferrari, from the BMW. Uh, it is, as Stefan Rattel was saying on the grid, an outstanding quality entry. All the manufacturers have embraced it. And, of course, some of them will say, oh, we didn't get a good BOP. Uh, and one of Otaro was fascinating in the press conference yesterday because uh, he did talk about the fact that the pace wasn't mega, but he said, I'm not complaining, I'm not moaning, and that's just the way it is, and we'll go, and we'll look at the data, and we'll try and find something. But you have to say, over the last few years, this really has stood out as a Mercedes circuit, hasn't it? And the Mercedes AMG GT3, seemingly, it's like it was designed for Macau. It really is, yeah. It's always a joy to hear it for the first time, blasting out of the pit lane on Thursday morning. Uh, let's run down the order then with 14 laps complete. There'll be one lap to go at the end of this one and a 16 lap race for the Macau GT Cup. Raffaele Marciello, car number 48, leads from number 40, Eduardo Mortara. 
Third place, the BMW of Augusto Farfus. Fourth place, the Ferrari of Daniel Serra. Fifth place, Daniel Gentadella. We've not mentioned him very often. No. That car needed a bit of repair, not too much. The team were quite comfortable last night. A few scuffs, we expect that around the circuit here <laughs> at, uh, at Macau. And Lawrence Van Tour completes the top six. Christopher Haza is in seventh place. So Raffaele Marciello, 15 laps complete at the end of this. Looking at him at work in the office. One place, can't it, when you pull the wheel around that much? Absolutely, but there's just no drama in that whatsoever. This almost languid style that Rafael <laughs> hears out of the car translates into it, even though he is on one of the most daunting and testing circuits in the world, and he's hustling a car within millimetres of concrete or brick or metal arco barrier. But even so, he just looks so calm. To complete 15 laps here, crosses over the start finish line, cuts the timing beam. A 16 lap race, they go on to the final lap, and the advantage 2.6 seconds Mercedes to Audi. There's a yellow flag at turn 22, so our band, sorry, Fisherman's band, I think somebody has had a moment, and we'll see whether that is going to massively affect the last lap at all. I don't think it will, but Raffaele Marcello has gone through, there's a bit of debris to say the very least. Try and work out in a moment who it is. Marcello and Mortara have gone through. We're on the last lap of the race. So, yellow flag will greet them at the end of the lap. Did that make me look purple to you? I'm not sure. I'm looking for a, a slow last sector, but I'm struggling a little bit. Thomas Priming, I'm not sure, went through the last sector. Final lap for Raffaele Marcello, working at the wheel, sawing his way through the tight and twisty parts of the circuit negotiating the walls and the barriers and the bumps in the road everything else that uh, the people of Macau negotiate every day at slightly slower speeds on mopeds and cars and motorbikes and vans and lorries yeah, whoever that body work has come from, I think he's still in the race. I'm slightly puzzled as to what it's dropped from. We'll have to have a look at the end of the race when they come past us and identify the new lightweight model. Uh, but certainly, as you can see, somebody's learned something. But yes, on these very busy public roads, this is the answer, isn't it? So it's Matteo Cairoli you're looking at getting sideways. But ahead, the body work's already come off something. Thomas Priming was up the road. And Priming was on the tail of Jules Gounon's Mercedes. Anyway, out of the hairpin comes Raffaele Marcello, then he's heading towards the chequered flag with Eduardo Mortara behind him. It is the last lap of the FIA GT World Cup. It is the last lap of the Macau GT Cup race, and it's going to be Raffaele Marcello to bring it home. It will be a second win in this race for him. It is a very prestigious, perhaps one of the most prestigious things you can win in a GT car. Raffaele Marcello won it in 2019, and he's going to round out the seven-year stint with Mercedes AMG with another win. The 2023 FIA GT World Cup, the Macau GT Cup, won by Raffaele Marcello for Mercedes AMG. He wins from Eduardo Montara, second for Audi, Augusto Bartos, third for BMW. Rookie at Macau, Daniel Serra, fourth, a mega job to be ahead of Danny Juncadea and Lawrence Van Thor in sixth. Christopher Haza taking seventh ahead of Alessio Picariello, then Earl Bamba and Leo Yi. And the rest of the cars come through. Have we lost Kevin Astra at the very end of the race? Because he was, I think, in 10th place, and he came through 12th. He dropped back, according to the timing screen, right at the very end. So, uh, a tremendous drive by Raffaele Marcello. Uh, yes, it was a shame that Mauro Engel had that mechanical problem, but you know what? The way that Raffaele had been going, I still think he might well have been able to put Mauro in his place. I did wonder if that bodywork we saw over there on the circuit was purple. And, uh, I can't, uh, uh, because we know you'd already got rear damage. Yes. Contact with Earl Bamba exactly earlier on. You could very well yeah. be right, Al. Yeah. Wow, look so, at that for a photograph. As everybody <laughs> comes having one. Isn't it? Cars of your dreams. Okay, Hello Kitty out of your side. Which 143rd model are you going to buy out of that grid? Um, well, there are so say, many good liveries, aren't there? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, um, um, no, I'm going to okay. stay. Uh, uh, Hello Kitty and Hello Kitty <laughs> only. <laughs> Like changing your football team. Oh, I suppose that's What's true. What's wrong with you? I do apologise. <laughs> Archiello savouring this moment. It could be the last lap he ever has in one of these cars. I don't think he's due to do the IGTC finale, the Gulf 12 Hours next month, is he? I think this is definitely it. Uh, so, Raffaele Marcello. 
That's been quite a devotional inlet. Yeah, uh, he doesn't often show emotion. No. But this might be just one of those times where he thinks, gosh, and the enormity of all of this starts to sink in. But he has been, as I keep saying, so successful in these cars that he has very quickly made himself the benchmark driver. And uh, with victory here in the pass, with victory in the, uh, as it then was, uh, Blanc Pan Sprint Series, the Suzuka 10 hours, uh, the Spa 24 hours, ADAC GT Masters, Fanatec GT Endurance, Fanatec GT overall. Uh, the list just goes on and on and on. And he's done it again this year. He's won the Endurance title with Timo Monislaski and Jules Gounon, and he's won the overall, the combined Endurance and Sprint. And when you ask him how many races he's won, or how many victories he's had in a given season, there's a, oh, I don't know, sort of shrug. <laughs> there's always a shrug. <laughs> he takes everything in his stride. He's been a tremendous uh, ambassador for the brand. So, uh, a great ambassador. Well, sometimes you have to give it a little bit, don't you? Yeah. And uh, if you want to write a script, then that will be the script to write for the association with Raffaele Marcello. It doesn't feel that long ago, you know, that he was in a single seat or a Formula 3 no, car no. around the Macau circuit. And he excelled in a Formula 3 car. He's excelled in a Mercedes AMG. Wonderful stuff. Yes, he was the FIA uh, European Formula 3 champion the year after the title had been won, the equivalent title had been won by Danny Joncadea. And now they are stable mates at Mercedes AMG. Yeah. It's funny how careers move and intertwine and break apart and come back, isn't it? It certainly is. And uh, a, a lovely finish to the career at Mercedes AMG for Raffaele Marchiello. Bounces his way around the circuit, thinking the marshals and will soon arrive down in pit lane and on to Park Fairmate to conclude the <laughs> final race. Yeah, there's a bit of emotion and across the line. Super stuff for Raffaele Marchiello. Happy with that, and rightly so. Stands atop the podium on two out of two races this weekend for the Macau GT Cup. Marcello, Masters, Macau, and Monsters Mortara in the process as his runner up, and Augusto Farfas taking third place. Well, we expected action and drama from the FIA GT World Cup. The Macau GT Cup has delivered yet again. Can we have three races next year? <laughs> it wouldn't be bad, would it? Two heats in the final. It's just, um, it's just a gift. Yeah. It is a gift of a race. Um, they work so well. I mean, we've got world-class drivers without doubt, but to only have one interruption in the 16 that race. <laughs> oh, hang on. That's the shot, isn't it? Save of the moment, Lello. Now the emotion comes out. We talked about him being cool and laid back and languid, but right now. Raffaele Marcello celebrates honours in the Macau GT Cup. Embraces the team, embraces the engineers, and Raffaele Marcello has done a tremendous job. <laughs> the team delighted, and for Mercedes AMG Team Landgraf, not just the team, but Mercedes AMG as well, thanking him for a win, thanking him for everything he's done for the brand over those seven years. A wonderful drive, and uh, he will make his way shortly up to the podium. Every cameraman wants a piece of him at the moment. All the videographers. There's been a really nice little three-minute video that's been done to say thank you to uh, Raffaele, uh, which was done the other week. And uh, when you watch it back, just remember all these wins that he's had win after win after win after win all around the globe so, uh, looking completely unruffled Raffaele Marcello is the winner of the FIA GT World Cup race the Macau GT Cup taken for the second time by Raffaele Marcello oh, wonderful moments uh, to savour for Raffaele Marcello and it is emotional closed his eyes for Quite a while when he got out of the car and posed for the photographs. And there are plenty of photographs of fist bumps yet to come, I reckon. Number one, Raffaele Marcello here at Macau. And a lovely big wall smile as well.
So Lalo will go toward the podium in a moment, and he'll be joined there by Eduardo Montara and Augusto Farfas. Three different brands in the top three is a pretty good result, isn't it? Let's make it four in the top four, because this is the result, and it is Mercedes AMG, Audi, BMW, Ferrari, the top four. Raffaele Marcello wins at Macau from Eduardo Mortara and in third place Augusto Farfus. It's Daniel Serra fourth ahead of Danny Juncadea and then Lawrence Van Thor with Christopher Hazer in uh, seventh place. Eighth, Alessio Picariello from Albamba and Leo Yi in tenth place. In eleventh, uh, it was Matteo Cairoli getting ahead of Kevin Estra at the end. Frankie Cheng, thirteenth from uh, Jules Gounon. He was fourteenth from Thomas Prining. Then in uh, 16th place, Sheldon van der Linde after his pit stop, and it was Marchie Lee who completed the order. The two non-finishers that we had, uh, Maro Engel, mechanical woes, David Chen in the barriers and triggering that safety car down at Lisboa. And the one non-starter, uh, Adelie Fong, after the big damage done to the Hello Kitty Audi yesterday. Uh, sadly, too much damage for the uh, Uno racing team to be able to sort out. Well, the podium will be our next port of call, but there's, of course, another race still to come on the gear circuit, and it is the Grand Prix itself, the Macau Grand Prix. Uh, we'll be getting underway at uh, half past three local time, and it's five minutes to one local time right now. Uh, before that, there is the traditional build-up to the race with the Lion and the Dragon dance. The Dragon joining the Lion this year for the ceremonial dance before the uh, race gets underway. The pit lane will open in due course to release the F3 cars around at the moment. Celebrations for the uh, German Landgraf team. Uh, Grazie Lello seems wholly appropriate, doesn't it? Uh, Lello these days, uh, having taken Swiss citizenship, uh, he had a Swiss license anyway, he ran under a Swiss flag, but uh, Italian by birth. He wins the Macau GT Cup. Let's look at the best bits of a stunning 16 laps. Some great images of the Macau GT Cup. And, uh, the team through the pit lane, getting ready to cheer Raffaele Marcello to the echo, and uh, deservedly so. The uh, dignitaries from the Sports Bureau of the World uh, Organizing Committee will be coming up shortly. And also, the uh, representatives from the FIA. Steve Linden, who is the president of the FIA GT Commission, will be on the too, and Stefan Rattel, the architect of the GT3 regulations that have been so successful all around the globe, standing very proud in the pit lane. While the doors atop the podium are opening, that means, therefore, that the uh, organising party are almost there, almost ready. And, uh, that's for a few time. Once we've got the drivers, the dignitaries, the trophy girls, the uh, awards, Top three will come forward, then we'll have the, if you like, Macau GT Cup drivers first, then the FIA GT World Cup will go to the winning manufacturer and the silver graded driver, uh, then the World Cup to the overall winning driver and the uh, winning manufacturer uh, as well. There's a trophy for the winning manufacturer from the Macau Grand Prix organising committee and also from the FIA. So it's going to be a good day for Mercedes AMG, that's for certain. Again, GT cars around the gear circuit have not disappointed, have they? Mega entry, and uh, with defeat for, of course, everybody but Mercedes AMG, you can pretty much guarantee they'll come back even stronger next year, determined to win this and stop this almost monopoly that Mercedes AMG has on the race with uh, three out of three over the last seasons. Darrell O'Young, then Mario Angel, now Raffaele Marcello taking honours for Mercedes AMG. 
And the other brands are going to be very keen to try and stop that if they possibly can. So uh, the organisers making sure they've got the overall top three and the winning silver, but also the team's representatives as well. Ladies and gentlemen, hello everyone. Here comes the 70th Macau Grand Prix, Macau GT Cup FIA GT World Cup Trophy presentation ceremony. First of all, let's welcome our winners to the podium. On second runner up, number 11, Augusto Farfish from Brazil. <laughs> welcome, driver. Congratulations. And our first runner-up, number 40, Eduardo Matara from Switzerland. Congratulations to Matara. And on the top of the podium, our winner is number 48, Rafaela Machero. Congratulations. Also, I would like to invite the winning manufacturer representative to the podium as well, Mercedes, Mr. Stefan Winden, head of Mercedes AMG Customer Racing. And also the super rated driver, number 33, Ye Hong Li from China. Congratulations. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the national anthem for the winner. Thank you. And now I would like to invite the guests to present the laurel and trophy to the winners. May I have the honor to welcome Mr. Poon Wang Kun, President of the Sports Bureau and Coordinator of the Macau Grand Prix Organizing Committee, to present the laurel and trophies to the winners. First, please present to our second runner-up, number 11, Agustu Farfish. Congratulations. And will Mr. Poon please also present the laurel and trophy to our first runner-up, number 40, Eduardo Motara. And of course, laurel and trophy to the winner of Macau GT Cup, FIA GT World Cup, number 48, Rafael Machiero. Congratulations. And I would like to invite Mr. Poon to also present the laurel and trophy to the representative of the winning manufacturer, Mercedes. Thank you. And Mr. Poon, please also present the laurel and trophy to our super rated driver, number 33, Ye Hong Lee. Thank you. Please gather at the center and take a photo together. To all the drivers, please raise your trophy and look to the front at our media friends, official cameras at the very center. Take a photo together. Once again, a loud cheers to the winners. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Poon. With all the drivers and winners, please remain on the podium. As up next, we are going to present the trophies by FIA. With all the drivers, please again remain on the podium. I would like to invite the presenter, our guest, Mr. Lutz Life Litton, president of the FIA GT Commission, to present, first of all, the trophy to the winning driver, please. Congratulations once again to Marcello. And I would like to also invite Mr. Layton to present the trophy to the winning manufacturer representative. Once again, congratulations to Mercedes. 
And Miss Lin, please remain at the center. Take a photo with all the winners. Once again, winners, please look to the front for one more photo together. You can gather at the center, please. Yes. Move a little bit to the center. Thank you very much. Please look to the front. Raise up high with your trophies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Linton. Thank you very much. With all the winners, please again remain on the podium. Thank you, our guest. And now let our audience share your exciting moment as it's the champagne time. All right, all the drivers ready, and our audience, your cheers ready, your great round of applause ready. Congratulations! Here are the winners of the Macau GT Cup, FIA GT World Cup winners. Congratulations. Thank you. And I would like to invite the top three winners. Please, again, remain at where you are for some questions. Thank you. The top three winners, please remain here. Thank you, our super rated driver. Thank you, representative of the winning manufacturer. And now I'll pass the time to Chris for some questions to the top three winners, please. Thank you very much. Well done to our, our top three. That's uh, Augusto's busy. Careful, Augusto, with the champagne. He's done this before, though. He's all right. You are professional. Augusto, uh, well done. A bit like yesterday, I watched your start. You had a really good start, but you just got blocked a bit, you couldn't get through, dropped back, so you had to be patient today to get the podium. Yeah, well, uh, I think those guys in front of you, I was a, a, a threat for the start, and I was ready to send it, and uh, there was not much room for me on outside, I almost had a massive shun there, so I dropped behind, and then was pretty much trying just to survive and hoping for a restart on the restart. Uh, Daniel lost the car in the last corner, so I could get a run. And then on top we had also Maro, unfortunately had a technical problem. So, you know, here is a place where I also need to be lucky. So yesterday I moved myself up to put myself in the position and uh, I can go home with a smile because this P3 it is a great way to finish the season. Mega job, well done, Augusto. Uh, Edo, can we grab a quick word with you? I think I've counted just on Sundays, just in GT, eight, eight podiums for you here. Great effort. The um, safety car and Maro's problem sort of helped you because you gained a place, but it also lost you a lot of time to Raffaele. I don't know if it really helped me a, a lot. Like he, he was creeping, uh, um, yeah, till the finish, the, till the start finish, and and I could not, uh, and I could not overtake him before. I think it would have been uh, probably more fair, you know, if he would have uh, come in, uh, in in the pit lane. Uh, nevertheless, you know, we still managed, you know, to stay in front. Uh, it was a really intense race. I was getting uh, under immense pressure uh, from the BMWs behind me, and um, don't know how. We managed, you know, to, to, to stay in front, but we did, and I'm um, very happy, you know, with, uh, with today. Well done, Edna. Good to see you. Raffaele, fantastic job. I have to say, so watching you this weekend in that Mercedes, it's been like watching poetry in motion. You've looked so smooth. I'm sure it's a different story inside the car. Uh, you've done a fantastic job, but I know that you'll agree it's, it's not just about the driver, this place in particular. It's about the team and all the work they do with the car as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm for sure, like, really happy for the victory. Uh, more or less, it's the same crew uh, when I won in 19. So, I mean, the same engineer, almost all the same mechanics. So, I mean, let's say this package works well, uh, actually. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy today. I mean, at the beginning, Maro was, was quite quick. And, yeah, at the end, let's say I was, I was a bit lucky when everything happened that I had a margin, so I was able to control the race. But winning Macau is never, never easy. Is it more rewarding to win around this track than, than most other normal race circuits? Because there are so many things that can go wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's already the only race where I don't share the car with some other drivers. So let's say when you win it, thanks to you and the team, let's say. So it's, uh, it's more special than, I mean, Macau is Macau, plus it's the PGT World Cup. So it's a combination of, of things that makes, makes everything really special. It's the last race of the season normally for for many, so you finish the season in the eye, and it's really nice. Mega job this weekend, well done, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Well done, Raffaele Marcello, your race winner, the Macau GT Cup. So well done to Raffaele Marcello, and he with uh, Eduardo Mortara and Augusto Farfus, the top three. Uh, what a way to round out your association with a manufacturer. The FIA GT World Cup, the Macau GT Cup is won in 2023 
by Raffaele Marcello. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the press conference following the Macau GT Cup, the FIA GT World Cup. The press conference has been streamed live, but if the people in the media centre here could just please be quiet just for the drivers, that would be fantastic. Thank you. We'll come firstly to the winner, of course, Raffaele Marcello. A significant moment, Raffaele, of course, not only winning the race, but signing off your career as a Mercedes AMG driver in style with that fantastic victory. Just talk us through that incredible race, please. Yeah, I mean, it feels, it feels amazing. Uh, at the end, we knew that the key was to have a good start, and then, he, I mean, it's all about the safety car restart because it's pretty pretty complicated to yeah, to overtake, so I had a good start and then, I mean, uh, Maro was quite quick at the beginning, then after the safety car, unfortunately, he had an issue and thanks to this, I, I gained a few seconds and then it was only a matter to control and until then. I mean, in Macau it's never easy because the mistake is always around the corner, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great race and I'm happy to finish. My MG life, let's say, in this way. Yeah. 好，歡迎大家嚟到第七十屆澳門格蘭希治大賽車澳門 GT 杯國際汽聯 GT 世界盃正賽嘅賽後記者會。剛才咧，我哋嘅冠軍得主啦，馬車路又同我哋分享咧，誒，好開心啦，可以攞到今次嘅勝利啦。其實。勝奪勝嘅關鍵咧，主要係起步做得好好啦。而好可惜喺比賽開始冇耐咧，就已經有誒安全車啦，咁所以比較難做到呢個超越嘅部分啦。眼高本身咧嘅速度都非常之快，但係之後因為賽車嘅問題而退賽，佢咧就得以把握機會控制全場啦，然後最後就獲得勝利嘅。喺澳門咧要奪冠並非容易啦，尤其是係有好多嘅彎位同埋非常之艱巨咯。佢好開心可以攞到冠軍。
there were a couple of moments in that first few laps where Mauro was actually just coming closer and closer to you and then obviously after the safety car restart there was this big gap just tell us what was going through your mind when you saw kind of a, a huge gap emerging behind you yeah let's say Mauro was always more or less around one second so let's say it was not under control but it's difficult to like let's say come closer and then after the restart actually when I saw the big gap I, in my mind I said fuck but maybe I did a mistake or I went too early because it was was strange to gain all that momentum and I thought maybe I, I have to go in the green not when I want so let's say it, it was a bit confusing but then let's say they told me he had an issue so after was was all good yeah. 而在比賽過程當中,其實眼高曾經有一段時間跟彩車一樣的接近 it's obviously a long race out there, tough conditions always on this street track. How about the tyre performance during that race? Yeah, it was, let's say, a, a bit hotter compared, uh, like compared to other days. But yeah, it's, it's 16 laps, but normally we are used to do even one hour with the tyre. So, I mean, there is not a degradation like in the other track, maybe like in Spa during a 24-hour race. So, let's say it's not like a critical point, the tyre degradation, I mean, at 10, you even don't go every time 100% because, I mean, in a city track, if you go, always go flat out. I mean, it's a bit risky, so you can't control. So it, it, it was not like, uh, like too difficult, let's say, to control the tire. 剛才他也有分享到輪胎性能的問題 Rafael, we'll come back to you shortly, but let's turn next to second position driver Eduardo Mortara. Eduardo, now obviously third position at one point, finished second. Just explain your race, please. Well, my race was uh, was an intense one from the from the start to the end, uh, trying to defend. Um, the cars that I get behind, I could not really attack the cars here that, are, that I get in front. For some reason, we were missing even more um, acceleration, dump speed than compared to yesterday. That was making my life like very, very difficult today, and I had to push, uh, push like crazy in the mountains part, uh, sliding all over the place, touching walls left and right. And um, I don't even know actually how we managed, you know, to finish the where we finished. But uh, it was definitely a very, uh, very intense race for me. 阿關德主和塔拉都跟我們分享其實比賽對他來說有起步到結束都非常之艱巨因為他賽車的 your description of the race does sound quite dramatic. The restart, though, when you passed or moved into second place, explain what happened there. Yeah, so I guess that Mauro had a problem. Um, yeah, and in my opinion, when you have a problem, you know, you pull uh, into the pit lane. Um, uh, don't know there. You'd ask him what he was trying to do. And... Um, yeah, in the end, uh, we still managed, you know, to stay in front of uh, Sheldon, and that was the most important thing. Uh, obviously, there was a gap with Raffaele uh, after that, but in in full honesty, I don't think that we would have been able, you know, to challenge him today. Wouldn't have been possible. Probably would have we would have been able, you know, to go with him, but not to pass him. Um, still, I think that you know the the, the move there wasn't wasn't great, but. Here is how it is. 
So, Edo, just, just to clarify, you, so your speed was compromised essentially is, is what you're referring to at that point. So yeah, so, so he was breaking, uh, breaking you, know, at the, at, you know, at the restart, and uh, that made, you know, the, um, the timing extremely difficult because he was trying to get me, uh, overtake him, like, before the line. And um, I, I found that actually pretty dirty, and um, Raffaele didn't need that. He, he was going to win anyway, so it is how it is. Like I said, we still managed to, be, uh, to finish P2, and that's the most important thing. If we come next to Augusto Farfus, third position, sixth at one point though, back to fourth, then third. That's quite a dramatic race. Explain how it was for you, please. Yeah, it was, uh, I'm very pleased and proud to be here. We, we started the weekend in qualifying, and here it's pretty much all about qualifying and qualifying. The two peak laps, I could not put them together to traffic. So after P8 in qualifying, I said, mm, this is going to be a difficult one. Yesterday, I managed to climb through the field, finish P4, and today I was ready for, for the final race. So uh, unfortunately, my start, I got boxed uh, out of turn one, uh, which then pretty much compromised my whole start because I was having a good run there. And there was not much room for me on the outside there. So uh, actually, initially, I thought the race would have been over there because the, the, the push was was intense, but somehow uh, I managed to keep the car on track, but I lost all the momentum and the cars, they got by me and, and that pretty much put them with the back foot. Uh, I kept pushing, but here, as this guy said, it, to really pass on track, uh, it is pretty difficult. So I was hoping for a, for a yellow, which then came and it was a very chaotic yellow, as they just described. So, and then uh, here is a place where I also need to be, to be lucky. So today i feel very sorry for sheldon i think he he showed an incredible speed uh, as a rookie here he was he was flying and uh, it's a shame that he got a puncture but his puncture gave me the podium so i think we show a very strong bmw package we are not really the fast car uh, on track but somehow we could always squeeze the lap through the fast sectors and uh, and i think this p3 is maximum could have achieved and uh, and i'm very pleased to finish the season uh, with this podium 而第三位的法夫斯也同我們分享其實他在排位賽的時候已經感覺到今屆參賽的車手之間的競爭中會非常刺激整個賽季其實大家的水準都比較高的 I guess I gather there was some uh, debris on the track that led to that tyre issue but um, your experience with the Macau weekend as a whole obviously you've been here many times just looking back I know the podium obviously was always a target but how, how much do you enjoy Macau in this particular weekend? Uh, I think it's it is probably one of the highlights of the season for every single driver uh, the track, the environment, uh, the place uh, also how the weekend runs, which is it's long, it's slow, so you always have to be, those 30 minutes where you have on track, you have to be ready. Uh, and this year is speci specific, if you see, uh, the level of our, our field was outstanding. I think uh, the best GT3 drivers in the planet, they were here. So just being able to compete and be chosen by the manufacturer to, to just be part of this incredible field, it is a huge honor for everybody. So. Uh, it's a shame that we missed Macau for the last few years due to, to the COVID, but now being back, seeing the, the field and seeing all these changes, uh, I'm pleased. Uh, every time I hope to, to come and whenever I get a call from the boss saying, I think to this year you're going to have a drive there, I put a smile on my face, so hopefully I can be back next year. And uh, thanks to everyone involved in this Macau Grand Prix, because after a big stop, we are back with an incredible show. 而法夫斯也有補充其實他覺得對於所有車手來說澳門的賽事絕對是整個賽季的焦點之一賽道的驚險、賽道的特別令到所有車手都覺得非常支持極的無論是你準備得多好其實都會遇到各種的挑戰他
並且佢想多謝所有誒、嗯、令到第七十屆澳門格林披治大賽車可以舉辦得咁順利嘅所有嘅部門啦，同埋所有嘅人嘅。We'll come next to、uh, Yi Hong Lee, of course, the winner of the, or the top silver ranked drive in the race, but finishing 10th overall as well. Great achievement out there. Congratulations.、Thank、Just you. explain your race because for a while there was a bit of、uh, movement forward from、uh, a few positions further back on the grid.、It's, how good was that feeling for you?、Uh, yeah, P10 was more or less where our target is.、Uh, it's, very, it's such an honor to race against the top of the world. Um, yeah, this week has been very tough for us. We、uh, we had a good start, and、uh, in the qualify we crashed.、Uh, we could put a lap together. We could be like、uh, P10 or something. But yeah, it is how it is. Then in race one we finish well, and then we get a penalty. So it, everything happened to me this weekend, like overtaking, overtaken, like penalties, crash. <laughs> So this race has been very, very lucky at the start. We had a really good run, and I took the other two silvers to secure our silver title. And then the rest of the race is just following the car in front.、Uh, there's not much opportunities to overtake.、Uh, it's been it's been a great experience this weekend. We've been in a car before, but it's very, very different. It's it's very challenging. We have to give it everything. It's not like before. We have to be. Just conservative, secure, secure the car, no crash. This week we have to go for it. So it's very, very interesting. We will be back. Yeah. 而剛才咧，誒、呃、國際汽聯能級車手中最佳成績車手葉博力咧，亦都同我哋分享啦。其實擠身前十咧，一直係佢同車隊之間嘅一個目標嚟嘅。佢好開心啦，可以同咁多勁敵一齊同場比賽啦。其實佢覺得自己嘅比賽週末咧，一開始都做得哦幾好嘅，只不過喺排位賽嘅時候，不幸啦，佢插到護欄啦，而喺。第一場比賽，第一回合比賽之後咧，佢嘅成績都唔錯嘅。不過後嚟咧，就因為賽會判罰啦，而導致佢嘅誒成績有滑落啦。佢覺得今次自己喺比賽週末裏邊咧，都經歷咗好多嘢啦，好開心可以自己誒喺、呃、自己嘅賽程裏邊咧，可以擁有一個咁好嘅經驗啦。誒、呃，即使喺同一架車裏邊咧，即使佢對架車好誒、呃、了解啦，咁但係其實喺澳門賽道上邊咧，各種事情都可以發生嘅。佢希望下年可以繼續翻翻嚟澳門比賽。And when you perform so well today, that obviously gives you some extra motivation for next year. What do you have a program for next year in place?、Um, we were racing GTWC Asia this year, and we will be continue next year. And our team won the team's champion this year, so we have a very good baseline to start with. So next year we'll hopefully be very strong in the in the championship. Plus, I probably gonna come back in Macau again.、Uh, as as a Chinese driver, this is very such a good an advantage to. Uh, that we can apply for for Macau, and、uh, for next year we also have a better start line baseline to start with Macau. So、um, I'm very confident about next year. So hopefully we'll have good season next year as well. 剛才咧，葉博力亦都表示啦，佢今年咧其實喺參加澳門賽事嘅過程誒、呃、之前咧，其實都有參加其他嘅誒、呃、錦標賽啦。咁佢希望咧下一年可以繼續通過參加啲錦標賽嚟到去獲得更加好嘅成績啦，然之後可以重返澳門嘅。We'll come to Stefan Vendel, head of、uh, customer racing at、uh, Mercedes AMG. Stefan, congratulations on your achievement this weekend with a victory here for Raphael. Your team, looking back, how satisfied are you with your performance? Yeah, I cannot be more satisfied than we、uh, executed. And、um, special thanks on this for Raphael and Team Landgraf Motorsport,、uh, but same time also for Craft Bamboo and、uh, Maro Engel who. Was on the unlucky side finally.、Um, so everything went、uh, really well for us, and from the first start. And I think it paid out that we、uh, invest in this event since 2016.、Um, we've been committed to this event with this car,、um, always be in the hunt for podiums or victories. And even in those difficult times during COVID, our Chinese teams、um, held the flex high and、uh, raced here with our new Evo kit car from 2020 onwards. And、uh, finally, Edo,、uh, Lelo, and Maro also invested last year in、uh, 14 days of、um, being in a hotel in quarantine just to be here at this event and、uh, run for the、uh, GRGT Cup. And I think this paid out, and、uh, this gave us from the first practice session on a small advantage, which disappeared towards、uh, this final race. And this is, I think,、um, And here at the, at the final race,、um, our drivers been able to defend the position we gained in the qualifying, and now we are really happy. 
really happy for all our guys in Germany and Afalterbach who cross fingers and that we can bring this trophy back home. 而剛才咧，冠軍廠隊梅賽德斯嘅代表 Stefan Wendel 咧，亦都同我哋分享啦。首先佢就恭喜馬塞洛啦、誒眼高啦同埋車隊啦。其實佢覺得自從二零一六年開始咧，誒、嗯、車隊咧其實一直都有誒不停咁樣攞到一啲冠軍啦，就或者係三級嘅名次啦。舊年咧更加有車手咧係喺隔離之後咧去參加比賽嘅，所以佢就覺得澳門實在非常之吸引啦。而佢好開心啦，可以同車隊同埋車手一齊咧，將呢個收官今年嘅收官之前咧，就定喺澳門。佢哋依家非常之開心啦，可以將呢個冠軍帶翻翻去誒德國嘅。Mario was having a great race before a problem struck. What information do you have? And also, what about Eduardo's comments about his delay at the restart? Um, it's a bit difficult to judge for me, so I have no technical details. So far, he wasn't able to shift up, and there was something. Which doesn't allow him to do it, and uh, in this case, just to Edo, I think uh, he, he didn't it on purpose to break him down. Um, there's an um, execution routine in case of uh, anything happens electronical in the car that he can try to make different kind of resets to try to make it working again, and this is probably what he tried. But I, I haven't spoken with Mara so far, so um, we have to leave it as it is for now. 而剛才咧，佢亦都有評論到誒、呃、莫塔拿啦同埋眼高之間嘅嗰、那個。誒爭位戰啦，咁佢就話其實眼高退賽咧都有可能係其他嘅原因啦，譬如話賽車嘅問題啦等等啦，咁所以佢就唔方便喺唔知道任何嘅細節情況底下咧作出過多嘅評述嘅。And, and Stefan, a, a final word from you about your、uh, departing driver, shall we say, and, and Rafael, how much of a contribution has he made to Mercedes AMG over the years? Oh well, in, in the past days、um, I've spoken so much about this time we shared together, starting with the、um, 2016 season when he was a customer of us, so、uh, joining our team together with Edo, I have to say, and Michael Meadows with、uh, Team Accordus, ASP or Aka ASP these days, in the Blancpain、um, in the Blancpain series, and there was a legendary race at、uh, Spa where where Edo and、uh, Lello made ah. Most of the time of the racing, and Lello was laying behind the podium and totally exhausted. And、uh, from this moment onwards,、um, I tried to get him under contract, and、um, it paid out. I have to say, <laughs> it paid out over the days.、Uh, we we won championships, big races. Here we went to Macau, won the World Cup, and we I enjoyed these days on these years together. And I wish him really, really good luck for his personal goals for the future. And that he will succeed, and we will stay friends anyway. He will be part of our AMG family forever. 而最後咧 ，Stefan Wendel 咧亦都有評論到，我哋今次嘅冠軍車手馬塞洛咧，其實係最後一次代表平子參賽㗎啦。之後咧，佢就會轉隊啦。咁佢就話其實喺誒、呃、過去嘅日子裏邊咧，自從佢哋睇到誒、呃、馬塞洛嘅表現之後咧，就一就好想將佢簽落誒 AMG 廠隊啦，然後同佢一齊要奪得唔同嘅大大小小嘅冠軍啦，企上唔同嘅頒獎台上邊啦。雖然好可惜佢之後咧係會離開啦，咁但係佢都非常之祝福佢啦，希望佢有一個。更加好嘅未來啦，同埋佢永遠都會係 AMG Family 嘅其中一份子嘅。And Raffaele, finally coming to you,、uh, some very lovely words from Stefan there. But for you, obviously, many many highlights. But give us one highlight that really mattered during your time with Mercedes AMG Power. But it's difficult because we we won so many things, and I mean we didn't have many laws actually.、Uh, when I look back, I mean we won everything except. Batus and Urbugrin, more or less. So I mean, it's it's quite a lot if I look back. And、uh, I mean, for sure, all the Macau wins, Spa, but even Adak、uh, with with Manfilter. I mean, there are many many nice moments, and I mean, I will miss it, and for sure will not be busy to repeat it. But I mean, I will try my best, and let's say this was my last gift for MJ, and now I I hope that. I will not be beaten by them, and yeah, let's see. 而誒馬塞洛咧，亦都有回覆啦，就話其實佢同誒
組隊一齊參加咗咁多場賽事咧，可以話係其實並冇一啲太大嘅艱難嘅時刻嘅。其實對於佢嚟講咧，全部都係、呃、非常之精彩啦，同埋、呃、開心嘅時刻啦。咁佢會永遠記住呢啲美好嘅 moment 啦、呃。當然佢會掛住車隊啦。咁但係希望今次澳門嘅勝利咧，可以作為佢俾 AMG 嘅最後一份禮物。Before we start some celebrations, are there any questions from the floor here? Now, I'm going to open for the audience. Any questions? Any second guess? Hi, guys. Congratulations on the top three. This is Michael McClure from Feeder Series. Lelo and Edo, it's a question for you. You both raced in the Cal Grand Prix in F3. Obviously, you're very experienced around here in GTs. If you had a chance to watch any of this weekend's racing, who's impressed you? And in any case, what lessons or advice would you give to the young drivers who are approaching the main race today based on your own experiences? But I saw, I mean, I don't know the name, but there is one guy in, uh, in F3 that it was his first time in F3 and he qualified. Boring. But I don't know, but he qualified P4 or P3 or something. I mean, to be a rookie in Macau and a rookie in F3 car, it's, it's quite impressive. So, I mean, then, I mean, I didn't follow much, so it's, it's difficult to say, and an advice, I, I mean, the race is long and you don't win the race in, in, in Lisbon, I think, I mean, we saw in the past also some crashing last lap in last corner, so, like, the race is long and yeah, it's better to be a bit careful until the end and maybe then to try something at the end, not at the beginning. 剛才有記者提問馬斯洛啦，其實佢自己咧都係誒、呃、有誒、呃、三級方程式誒、呃、有揸過三級方程式嘅，咁佢就問話，佢覺得誒、呃、今屆嘅三級方程式車手裏邊咧有冇邊一位表現得比較好啦，同埋有冇啲咩建議可以俾到佢嘅？馬斯洛就話咧，佢並冇太過留意今屆嘅賽事啦，因為佢自己其實都準備緊自己嘅比賽啦，但係佢記得誒、呃、賽車裏邊賽事裏邊咧，其實係有一位第一次駕駛三級方程式嘅車手啦，佢覺得佢嘅表現咧係幾好嘅。誒、呃、至於建議。方面咧，佢就誒同佢希望可以同佢講咧，其實比賽並非每一場都會勝利啦，總會有誒、呃、事故啦，總會有未能完賽嘅時候啦，所以每一場比賽咧都要更加小心啦，然後去準備操作。Are there any more questions? If that's sorry, could you just give a response to the question? I'm so sorry. For me, speaking about you know the Macau F3 is is actually quite special. I think that uh, this race really uh, uh, gave me a professional career, and um, it's something that you know for the young young drivers, it's something that they shouldn't underestimate. If you can show that you're talented and you're quick here, it definitely can uh, can have an impact on your career. And um, the ones that impressed me, we were discussing about it. I think it's Brown, Browning. Yeah. And uh, I was actually speaking with my engineer. I think that he engineered him uh, with a prototype somewhere. And he told me that he was really good. Uh, so, yeah. And also, as, as Alf Italian, you know, Gabriele Mini also, you know, cheering also for him. And uh, yeah, let's see. 而就同一條問題咧，莫加塔莫帕拉都有分享到佢嘅誒睇法啦。佢就話其實澳門三級方程式賽車咧，不嬲都係誒、呃、非常之特別嘅一場賽事嚟嘅，亦都係令佢咧可以開展到佢嘅專誒職業賽車生涯啦。佢自己咧都喺澳門咧，因為爭勝而受到各大嘅關注啦。然之後開始參加到唔同嘅比賽嘅，所以其實澳門賽事咧絕對係誒、呃、不容。忽視啦，亦都係不容小看嘅。喺澳門可以攞到冠軍咧，其實係會令到車手咧獲得到更加大啦，同埋更加多嘅機會嘅。咁佢咧亦都有點名啦，講到布朗寧同埋米尼嘅出色表現。Well, that concludes the press conference for the FIA GT World Cup, the Macau GT World Cup. Gentlemen, congratulations. Just keep me here for a photograph, please. If you all join together, and then we'll do a photograph, and that will be all. Thank you.